What's going on guys, National Master James Canty III here and today we're looking at video 2 from the book coming out this year of Tournament Guidebook, Axioms, One-Liners, and Mantras. This is going to be puzzle number 2. Check this one out, okay? Now pause the video, see what's going on. It's white to move here. The queens are actually opposed. And this one's called Staying Active. Like how do you stay active? What are you going to do in this position? First off, take a look, glance, see what's going on. We got two bishops, right? Let's do a let's do a, a material count first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pawns for black. And then white has one, two, three, four, five. So down two pawns already, down two pawns. But let's look at our development. We're castled. His king is not. Okay, how about queens? Queens on the board. Right, pieces all look the same. What's the piece count overall? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're only down two pawns, but we're up on development. So we evaluate this position real quick. How would you stay active? In fact, what would you do? What would you do? Your first off, your queen's opposed. So you either move the queen or you do something else. You can pause the video or you cannot. But we're going to see what happens here. So I'm going to give you all a few seconds. Give you a few seconds to figure this out. It's very strong stuff here. Very strong stuff. Okay, it's time. Here it is. Now, queen takes f6 is not a move. Queen takes f6 is not a move, right? So we, we don't want to trade this. We're down two pawns. So, yeah, I mean, okay, double pawns, right? Then maybe attack it, but then 95 and we live. Everything's easy here. Like, you just lost your attack. You're still down two pawns here. And this ain't fun, big fellow. This is not fun. So, actually, the move here, guys, if you said e5 and we live, you are right. That rhymed. You are right. e5 is correct. E5 is right. This is a very strong break here. So, of course, you have knight takes E5 and pawn takes E5. Now, if pawn takes E5, and this is, the, of course, what happened in the game, is you see the two players here, Paul Morphy versus Ernest Morphy. This was a real game, in fact. So, D takes E5. After D takes E5 happens, well, first off, the bishops open up. Hello, big fella. Who's home? Look at these bishops swiping the board. Now, you still have to stay active. Think about threats. What do you do in this position? Now, of course... E5 happened. We got to keep it going. You can't slow down. So what do you do next? E5 is on the board. Check it out. Take a look at the position. What would you do? Here it is. Here's the game move. Rook F to E1. And you're done. First off, the king is in the center of the board. So you want to put the rook here to help in this attack. It takes three or more pieces for a successful attack. So E5 is definitely under fire. The knights on the rim are dim. This knight is looking crazy over here. King in the center. I can't castle. I got to do something. So he says, you know what? Bishop D7. I'm just about to A, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I got to get up out the way ASAP. Because if knight takes E5, I'm just gone. I'm just like, forget it. That's what he's saying here. Now, of course, white has the initiative here. And we notice that our king is going to the other side of the board. When, when you castle on opposite sides, whoever gets to the king first is going to win. So after bishop d7 here, we know he's going to castle. So what would you do next? Walking you through this one. What are you going to do next? White to move. How do you finish this off? Can you finish it off? Let's see. Rook a to b1. Now we're attacking b7. Not really. I mean, it is it is attack. But after casting queen side, you know, sacking could be the first thing. That's the first thing I would think. And Tao, shout out to my grandfather. So, you know, Bishop, Bishop A6 um, is another move as well. But maybe sacking Rook takes B7 or something like that. Maybe Knight takes E5. Tactics still going here. What do you do next? Do you sack the Rook? Or do you threaten it with maybe like Queen B3, Queen B2, something like this? Maybe you take on E5 because the pawn's there. You're still down two pawns. But you do notice that you feel some kind of way. Like you're actually, you know you're doing well in this position. So here we go. Paul Morphy being who he was, played Bishop A6 and we in the mix. Oh my goodness, get this man off the board. This is a gross move here. Gross move. Bishop A6. Whoa, this is already scary. You basically have to take this. And actually, in the game, I'm going to give you the game move. The game move was Knight A5, and that's not live. In fact, this is a wrap. Knight A5, and he lost. And of course, the intention was after Queen takes, you know, Pawn takes or Queen takes, but you don't have to take it. Just because something's there, or it can be captured, doesn't mean you have to capture it. So actually, the, the winning move here is this is actually plus 21 by the engine. Plus 21, my guy. So Rook E to C1. And then the queen takes c7, and that's a rapster. So that's uh, that's over there. But 
Um, yeah, and it, this was tough. Like, it, there's a lot going on here. Like, this game ended quickly after a 9A5 and, and rookie to C1. But here, actually, the best move and what we want to show here today is what is the best and what will happen here. In fact, the engines call this zeros. It, unbelievable. This is why you got to have a human evaluation and a computer evaluation because this does not look equal by far. But let's look at a few lines. After B, B takes A6 here, B takes A6, so he opens up the line. Now, of course, we got to figure this out here. How do you, What do you do? You gave up a piece, so now you need to keep attacking. H3 doesn't work. Knight takes E5 is blocking with your face. So that's not a move, right? You have to actually keep the, the attack up. So Queen B3 is threatening mate. Beautiful move here. If Knight A5, that's not live. Queen B8, mate, and we great. Have a nice day. So you have to make the moves. You have to make some, some looks for the king. In fact, Bishop B6 and Bishop g4 are options and why bishop e6 it attacks the queen well bishop e6 is game over so try it what do you do here advanced tactics 101 come on y'all bishop e6 what's the move come on easy queen b7 right king d7 now this is not the easy part in fact it gets nuts in here i love showing this line it gets nuts right here after king to d7 what do you do Right, probably hit him with a check, easy. Rook B to D1, Knight D4, he blocks, because going back to E8 is like game over. Queen takes C6, so he blocks with the Knight, hoping you take here so I can have the pawn in the center. But Knight takes C5 and we live, hit that man with a check, flex real hard, and then King E8, that's a wrap there. Now let's see, how do we finish this? You you, you don't have this check, obviously, because of uh, the Knight can capture it. So we do Rook takes D4 for the score. He comes right back here, bam, eliminating a piece, and now, check on the back rank we have two ways to block rook d8 and queen d8 let's check uh rook d8 first let's check queen d8 after queen d8 queen d8 well you got it you can't trade just trading doesn't work knight c6 hangs the hangs the uh, hangs the uh, queen so you want to do something very decisive and strong like queen c6 check and of course blocking with your face for rook d7 is a move but you also have bishop to d7 so after this bishop d7 move which is very strong but also look <laughs> Man, I mean, we have a very strong move here. Knight takes d7. This is a wrap. This is it. This is over. You can't even block with the queen. And even if you you could, it still would be blocking with the queen. And I'm taking it. So it's pretty bad there. So, okay, how about uh, rook to d7? If rook to d7, ouch, knight takes f7. Bro, look at this move. Gross. Can't take with the rook. It's pin. Pin for the win. Bishop, I mean, pinned here too as well. Can't move anything. Knight takes is, is blocking with your face as well. This is a wrap. I mean, look at this. Absolutely gross. When I saw this analysis, I was like, this is nuts. This is how you stay active. Sack a piece. Check him. Hit him there. Oh, you can't move nothing. Keep hitting him. Right? That's just how it goes. Rick D7. Knight takes F7. And if King takes mate and we great. Oh, my goodness. This is a family channel. Let's get this off the screen here. So, Coming back here, um, that is gross as well. So, rook d8, okay? Rook d8 after rook d8, same move. Queen c6, you can't move the king due to the bishop diagonal once again. And bishop d7 and rook d7. So, rook d7, bishop d7, let's look. I mean, same same idea. Same idea here. So, that's not happening. So, rook d7 after rook d7, rook b1. This was like, yo, what? All this going on and then you stop to say, ah, back door is open. Rook b1. We coming through the back way. Rook B1. And you can't do anything. Can't do anything. Queen takes is going to be mate. So Queen D8, you go back, but snaps, and you got two ways to capture. Of course, uh, Queen takes is just Rook on the back rank. So you take with the bishop, and then we come back. <laughs> oh, front door is open too. Sorry. Rook E1 check. Queen E7. This is a wrap. And instead of taking the queen, <laughs> the engine's like, oh, wait a second. Queen A8. This is just nuts. This is like, bro, don't do this to this man. He has a family. Queen takes c8 and mate and we great. This is like wonderful. That was so cool to see how you stay active in these kind of positions. But that was only in that line with bishop to e6, which is it looks like a, a move you would make, especially on some see uh, some offense and defense. I mean, you're you're on the defense here. Mate's coming. You would like to the best defense is offense. I teach this to students a lot. The best defense is offense. So if you're trying to be offensive here, you know, it's very um it's very, very likely you will play a move like bishop b6. Bishop g4, though, is the engine move, and that's hard to see. Bishop g4, like, what's the difference? I am I mean, like, let's flip the board here. Like, flipping the board. In this position, it looks like you would go bishop e6. You know, it, this is scary. Like, I don't even want to, you know, I, I, I'm getting chills here with looking at this position from the back side. Let's just flip it. So queen b3, and then after queen b3, there's bishop g4. And now this is supposed to be a draw. Well, let's see why. This bishop g4 actually made a big difference. Now after queen b7, king d7 again, same check. 
but instead now we have king e8 and we can run just a little bit more and actually remember think about this the bishop was blocking this so queen takes c6 was a lot was happening a lot in that line but in fact the queen's actually defending now so queen takes c7 here and then you actually take on f3 to damage his structure in fact there's actually nothing here after rook takes is just trading we're just trading like we have no problems as black miraculously g takes f3 rook takes d1 rook takes and then knight d4 now it's time for knight d4 and in fact there's nothing you can do which is uh insane and actually on the back if, if you check on the back rank it's only checks and i just defend the checks so rook takes d4 after rook takes d4 uh e takes d4 and that's it you don't have any more pieces i literally sacked my whole life my whole life right and i'm down a rook now this is it so that we only have a perpetual out of this there's nothing left there's literally nothing left there but a perpetual but this could have been the continuation in fact the game ended um here after 95 and gg and start a new one you can actually look this game up here i, I did and saw that this game got decisive after 985 that was not live in fact it was b takes a6 and it became very wild but again the the moral of today and the theme is actually Make sure you're staying active. So starting from the, pos the position here, instead of maybe trading queens, you notice a few things. I'm castled. I'm ahead on development. The bishops are swiping the board here. I should stay active. The king's in the center of the board. You know, yeah, I'm sacrificing a third pawn. I'm down two pawns. So being down a third pawn here, sometimes that's like, oh, man, I'm down three pawns. But it's not about that material. Even Gary Kasparov talks about that. Kasparov says... Um, you know, material will uh, trump uh, or activities. Activity will trump a material most times. So if you're active and you lose a material, that's fine. You know, but how active are you? How do the pieces look? And it's, et cetera. Especially this is a great example right here. So hope you guys enjoyed video number two. This is a hundred video series. Of course, there's going to be a lot more than that. And uh, and it's going to keep coming. So make sure you guys watching the video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Appreciate you guys for watching. And I'll see you on the next video.